Good evening. I'm Linda Jones and I have a friend here with me, Betty Graham, and we're just excited to be here in your living room or wherever you're watching TV uh, tonight. And I hope that you enjoy the program we have today. Um, the Lord has been so good to us at Danville Rescue Mission lately. We just had a wonderful Thanksgiving season, went through that, and now we're preparing for Christmas. We have um, some ladies that are putting together uh, baskets for their children that come in to eat. And then there's a lot that we do through the year, and we're not quite as active at Christmas because so many other churches do things. And as you know, on this program, uh, we, we're here because we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we believe that America is great because we're a Christian nation. And also, we believe that the church is a very strong part of why our nation is what it is. So we want to just uh, give... Uh, Thanks to all the churches that support Danville Rescue Mission and all the people, many people, that uh, represent different businesses, etc. And I know it's because of goodness out of your heart and a concern for the poor. There's many promises. If you get into the Word of God, there's a lot of promises of uh, good. Uh, the Lord will help you through your illnesses, many things. Uh, to people who help the poor. And again, that's just one reason why America is great. So uh, a couple quick things before we get into Betty, uh, what she wants to share today. Um, beginning in January, we have a new discipleship recovery program beginning. It's a 90-day program. It's very uh, intense, and it's designed for men coming out of prison or even off the streets, whatever, who really have committed their life to the Lord, but they have a lot of um, issues still in their life. And usually it's addiction, maybe to gambling, maybe to alcohol, maybe it's sexual addictions. We live in a day when there are so many addictions, so many drugs, so much mm -hmm. that can take uh, the um, ability to uh, think and to motivate normally. And God is the answer, but it isn't always instant. And sometimes it takes being separated and uh, being in 12-step programs and counseling and just in a different environment. So uh, Danville Rescue Mission is very pleased that we're going to be able to present that beginning in January. Also, another thing that right now is uh, we have a, the peer court is sending a lot of young people to us who are helping serve the meals and work, they're going to work in the thrift store and just um, kids who are, are just a mm, little bit in trouble, but uh, they love coming to the mission and it's just a blessing. I think part of the reason they like being at the mission is because it's Christian and also because James and some of our other staff are a lot of fun to be with. But anyway, enough of a commercial for Danville Rescue Mission. Uh, Betty, I know that the Lord laid a special scripture on your heart, and I just want you to uh, share testimony, anything in your life that you feel like would really minister to our listening audience. Well, first of all, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and you, Linda, because um, Christ is the reason for the season. Amen. And uh, without Him, there would be no hope or a future. And I was praying about our, your television program today and, and uh, when you called me the other day and uh, the Lord gave me a pearl uh, of great prize. Mm -hmm. And it was in Matthew 13, 44. And I had not thought about that uh, proverb before. And uh, so let me read it. Sure. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hidden in a field, the which, when a man hath found, he hideth, for joy thereof goeth and sell all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Now, who, um, who was that person that found the treasure, and and what is the treasure? And that person is Yeshua, Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and he paid the price at Calvary. He paid for all of it, mm -hmm. all of our sins. That's why you're working for these, with these men, mm -hmm. because they, they're, 
there's nothing that Jesus will not forgive if we come with the with a heart, a broken and contrite spirit, he said he would not despise. Amen. And, and then, not only that, again he says, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking uh, goodly pearls, who when he hath found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now who is this merchant that Jesus would be talking about? He's trying to tell him that he is, again, realizes that I love the bride, and the bride is that pearl of great price, and it's valuable, and the field is the world. And he's trying to tell his disciples, I am the Messiah that has came, and I am paying the price, and pearls were valued, jewelry was valued, uh, people of uh, the monarchy had jewels, and they had uh, pearls and things like, but God said the most precious pearl is you, Linda. It's Inside you is Jesus. You're not just anybody, and he died just for you, Linda. And the pearl, where is the pearl fine? I thought, well, Lord, why did you use the idea of a pearl? What is a pearl? Well, Linda, where does the pearl come from? Oysters. Yes. And what about, what about that oyster? Uh, you're doing the study. <laughs> it has a hard shell. And people today, you don't know really what's in there. You don't know. But when you open that up, there's sometimes no pearl. But sometimes there is a pearl. And when you go out and you sow your seed, he was talking about sowing the seed, mm -hmm. pre preparing the ground. You go out and you prepare, but you don't know which one of those seeds is going to be implanted in a heart mm -hmm. that will become a great pearl, a pearl uh, unto Jesus. And so um, there was uh, this scripture, uh, Jesus paid the price, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friend if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves. For the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all the things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Mm -hmm. And appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. And, what your, and that your fruit would remain. So that whatever you ask of the father in my name, he may give to you. I command you that you love one another and I admire what you do Linda you're loving those people who are unlovely well they're Some not other. really unlovely <laughs> well to murderer, I mean somebody in prison or who's been on the street right. to some people would, would look mm -hmm. down on them mm -hmm. you know what I like to think about Betty is where it tells us in Genesis that we are created in God's image and sometimes we've lost sight of that but God created mankind in his image to me that is so awesome Betty to think of the creator who um, made the heavens and the earth you know and then to think we're created in his image well of course we're not we're not God but someday it says we'll be as he is mm -hmm. so we're going to understand things when we get to heaven that we can't understand now for sure. But when I see people who are broken and hurt, mm -hmm. I one thing I think, but by the grace of God, there right. go I for sure. Yeah. Plus, I didn't get saved till I was 28 years old. So mm -hmm. I know what it's like to, to not have any eternal hope, you know? And um, sure, I wasn't down in the gutter or anything, but um, it's only the grace that kept me from there. But the, the main reason that I am motivated uh, to serve in mission work is basically because we were called to it, but is because I know that Jesus is the answer. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So, but I love what you're reading about that Jesus loved us enough, you know, to uh, come and rescue all of us. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, I want you to, I'm going to get personal with you, Betty. Mm -hmm. So you just tell me, when did Jesus really become real to you? When you were just like living your own life, doing your own thing, and then all of a sudden you thought, good heavens, I'm a sinner, I need Jesus. Well, I wish... Uh, it wasn't as simple as that, Alinda, because um, I grew up in a home of an un unsaved father. Mm -hmm. And uh, a mother, uh, they were both my grandparents, but unbeknownst to me, mm -hmm. I thought they were my parents. So um, my mother could not take us to church. She was saved. She told me she skipped down the railroad track from the old country church, mm -hmm. and she thought that was the best day of her life. Yes, that's how I felt. And that's how we should feel when mm -hmm. Christ comes mm -hmm. in our heart. So she tried to do her best to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep us in line and have food on the table. But I had an aunt that didn't have any children. Mm -hmm. And she came over, and it was my dad's sister. And she said, can I take Betty to church? Mm -hmm. And my mother said, yes. And my aunt started loving, mm -hmm. see, love one another. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I was just a little 10-year-old mm -hmm. and probably rambunctious mm -hmm. and obnoxious and everything a 10-year-old <laughs> can be without Christ. Mm -hmm. And she... She took me to this little church in Tuscola. In fact, I went and visited the other mm -hmm. day to bring me back some memories mm -hmm. about her taking me there. But I often think about how many little girls are in homes, Linda. As you have a burden of uh, the mission, I have a burden for families and children that nobody's asking, would you like to come to Mm -hmm. BBS, Good point. would you like to come to church? Mm -hmm. Because without my aunt asking mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. I never would have come. And yet across the street, my best friend's parents were godly, mm -hmm. Christians, uh, hardworking people. They're, I envied her because mm -hmm. she had a bookcase of Christian books. Mm -hmm. But never once say, could Betty go to church with us? Not once, yeah. Linda. And so when I did go, I wanted to go all the time. Mm -hmm. But then there has to be a coming a point of, as you say, accept Christ. Because I was like that little oyster. There was no mm -hmm. uh, pearl in my heart yet. <laughs> Jesus had Nothing not to work on in. that grain. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, my mother, for fear of my brother going overseas, it was war, um, the Korean War. She spoke to both of us. She wanted us to get saved. And I got the catechism book from the Methodist Church and all the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. And as a 12-year-old, out the door, I did not read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it came time. She said, well, this is the Sunday year to join the church. Mm -hmm. So I got up there. And, you know, I thank God he sees mm -hmm. me and where I was. And, and we were to kneel down at the altar, and we were to say yes and no to these questions. But instead, I called on Jesus. And I said, Jesus, help me. Mm -hmm. And who shall I ever call upon the name, name of, of the, the Lord? Lord shall mm -hmm. be saved. Mm -hmm. And the minute I said, Jesus, help me, I heard an audible voice, Linda. Wow. And this was, I was 12 years old. Nobody mm -hmm. told me that Jesus had a mouth, mm -hmm. that he talked Spoke to us. by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't understand that. Right. I was just 12. And he said, do you really believe in me? Instantly, every one of my Sunday school teacher's lessons started going through my mind. And I thought, yes, he is the Savior. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, yes, I do believe in you. And the instant I said yes, he did his part. Isn't that interesting? And I wept and wept and wept, not knowing mm -hmm. that he was cleansing me all of the things mm -hmm. that had happened to me mm -hmm. as a uh, just a backward child. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I didn't know I had mm -hmm. sin because mm -hmm. I wasn't out doing anything, mm -hmm. but I knew that he cleansed me. Right. I cried so hard, Linda. 
the tears were running out and I couldn't stop them. Mm-hmm. And my, it was running down my coat oh, and wow. everything. And that poor old Methodist church never heard anybody cry that hard since, <laughs> I don't think. And I was sat down by my grandmother afterwards, which I was mm-hmm. my mother. At the, well, she'll always be my mother. And, and just kept on wi- weeping. And then I realized years later all the, that he had a plan. But at that time, Linda, I just knew I was saved. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be in church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, as we develop in the Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. But the door was open for fellowship mm-hmm. in the youth. Mm-hmm. And I believe in youth programs. Mm-hmm. And I believe in teaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I didn't have a Bible. So I had my brother's job. He went off to Korea. Mm-hmm. I mowed yards. <laughs> and I saved my little dollars up mm-hmm. and bought my first Good Bible. Good for you. That is but really see, that, neat. I still have it. Wonderful. <laughs> that is a sweet story. Well, but I think to honor your pastor, this is really what was on my heart, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, in California, I once uh, uh, prayed real hard, you know, as you say, Ask, and he, you shall receive. Mm-hmm. And I prayed, Lord, I need a church home where I can learn. Mm-hmm. Right. And God sent us to this house. Mm-hmm. And the neighbor, I thought, it said, get in your closet. I took it literally, Linda. Yeah. I kicked the shoes back and got down and started praying. Right. <laughs> and the neighbor kept saying, come to our church. Mm-hmm. It's, a doctor's, it's non-denominational. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, how? That's not a Methodist. Mm-hmm. That's not a Baptist. Mm-hmm. But I went. And the minute I walked in, this man had the Graduate School of Theology. Mm-hmm. And he also was uh, with Billy Graham. Mm-hmm. And in the minute I walked in, Linda, I said to my husband, I don't know about you, but I'm joining this church. Mm-hmm. Because his sermon was wonderful. Mm-hmm. And then he taught us how to write the sermons down. Mm-hmm. When you write a sermon down, you write it on your brain. Mm-hmm. And then I w- wanted to share it immediately. So I went to my neighbor and I said, you need to come to church with me. She was an elderly woman and I mm-hmm. adopted her as my grandmother mm-hmm. because I didn't have anybody in California, mm-hmm. no friends. And she said, well, my husband's a Baptist and he won't let me go to your church. So guess what? I taped his sermons and took them to him, Right. her. Then I sent it back to my mother. The highest compliment you can give your pastor is to bring someone to church. Right. You're yeah. esteeming the man of God mm-hmm. that he, this is your leader and this mm-hmm. is your teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not, it's not just feed yourself mm-hmm. and walk away. He's training you to feed others. Right. Oh, definitely. And I, if ever we lived in a day... It's today where the church needs to get out of the four walls of the church and, and uh, share the gospel. Just First of all, you have to live a life of integrity. We need, you know, uh, I think we've heard the grace message so strong. I don't know what it is. But anyway, um, I just am thankful for the Christians who are raising their children to be good citizens in our day mm-hmm. and age. You know, and there's a lot of them out there. Uh, I, I see uh, young parents working harder at uh, rate, and I think part of the reason they're working harder to raise their children as Christians is because the world is slipping so bad that they have to make a stronger effort. Where when we were kids, you could, you know, everyone acted like they were quote Christian almost and were in Christian homes. But uh, now people who really know the Lord are working extra hard to to teach your children to be good citizens and to uh, love their neighbors and to pay their bills and to do things right. So. Um, anyway, it's a good testimony, but I know that you share your testimony and have through the years you wrote a book to mm-hmm. share your testimony. And the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Mm-hmm. But, you know, talking about pastors and church, um, if, if you're watching and you aren't in church, I just encourage you to visit around. Don't go just one week. Maybe go for four weeks. And then if you just aren't comfortable, go to a different one until you find one that fits. Because it's just like we don't all fall in love with the same man, you know, and marry him. We don't all feel comfortable in the same church environment. But uh, as long as they preach that Jesus suffered and died and rose from the dead and that he gives eternal life through the forgiveness of sin, 
He shed his blood to forgive our sins. Uh, then I would say it's a foundational church, the Apostles' Creed. Just ask them if they believe in the Apostles' Creed. But anyway, get in there and uh, become, let it be a part of your social life. And especially if you haven't been in a church for 20 years, you might be amazed at how much church has changed in the last 20 years as far as socially, not, mm -hmm. not the message. But I say that, you know, what do I know? I don't know everything for sure, but I do know this, that uh, if we know Jesus, we need to uh, be committed to a church for sure. And I, I love, uh, we go to uh, an Assembly of God church. In fact, um, we're working right now to get our credentials reinstated. We've been non-denominational, but um, I love the Assemblies of God, but I really believe that there's so many good churches out there that anybody can find a church that they enjoy and that they uh, that will love them like part of the like part of the family. It is like family, mm -hmm. and I know one thing that I love my family. But when I got saved, those Christians around me were they were closer in many ways than they my own family. family. They were my family, and thank heavens, most of my family came in. So it it because. Like you, you don't just can't keep it in. If you love someone, you want to share with them. So we've and ask them to pray for that church. Yes, yes. They might be surprised. Right, and pray for that <laughs> church you go to. I know, um, and also we we're talking about little girls, and I know my heart is for little girls. I had four boys and then two girls, but I know in our church there are a couple women who just work so much with teaching. Uh, the girls in missionettes and then their Bible quizzes and these women, I mean, they work like a full-time job mm -hmm. with these kids and it's just amazing and I just want to give them honor and credit. So many, you could go on and on. And that's why I say in America, when so many people are bashing the church, uh, they, they just do not know how many good people are in there uh, like you said, I know our church has a soup kitchen once a month and they do giveaways and uh, but mostly it's ministering to the children and uh, the Word of God, fellowship, all those good things. So we love the church. We love America. But we only have a few minutes left and I do want to read one thing and then we're going to pray. Mm -hmm. But usually, now Pearl, my dear friend Pearl, has gone to a conference. She will be the hostess next week because Jerry and I will be on vacation. And I know we talk more about world issues and our opinion and our desire to see America become stronger, Christian nation. Uh, so, um, but anyway, I do want to mention one thing that's hot on the subject today, and that is the uh, investigation against the CIA. Uh, now, I will say, you know, probably our country is slipping, and along with that slipping, uh, sometimes how we handle situations w might be not as moral as it would have been in World War II. I don't know. And I don't believe, of course, in uh, torture. However, I think we need to be a realistic about this whole situation. Uh, first of all, well, I just want to read this about the United Nations. This is what upset me, and it was in the News Gazette this morning. The United Nations wants to prosecute all of the CIA, anybody responsible, as well as even maybe the President of the United States, that if they travel overseas, the uh, Bush, I presume, that they should be uh, prosecuted and jailed if they travel. And I'm going to read it straight from the paper. It says, Zid Rod Al Hussein, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, said it's crystal clear under international law that the United States which ratified the UN Convention Against Torture in 1994, now has an, ob an obligation to ensure accountability. In all countries, if someone commits murder, they are prosecuted and jailed. If they commit rape or armed robbery, they are prosecuted and jailed. If they order, enable, or commit torture, recognized as a serious international crime, they cannot simply be granted impunity because of political expediency, he said. Okay. Now here is the United Nations saying all these things about our CIA. And I just want to remind you that ISIS is over there killing and murdering hundreds of Christians in Iraq. And that uh, I don't hear him saying, oh, we need to do something. We need, need to prosecute uh, those people because it's an international crime. 
we are dealing with people who do not have a Western mindset. And I really believe that we need to stand together as the United States and uh, let's just evaluate a little bit clearer when we um, discern right from wrong. So anyway, I just, this really just broke my heart to think that um, our country would, that Washington would um, come against our CIA, to be honest. Even if they did things wrong, this is, I don't feel like this is the way to handle it. But anyway, Betty, I know that's a hobby horse there, but it's not just a hobby horse. It's our nation and our enemies of our nation. And God is the answer. God and righteousness is the answer. And unity is the answer. So let's just pray for our nation. Betty, you pray and I'll close. Okay. We do know that, Father, we come before you because you're a loving Father. Yes. Our Heavenly Father. And you said in your word, the righteousness exalts a nation, mm -hmm. but sin is a reproach. And we have sinned. I know when I was in India, uh, it, back in 94, I believe Praise it was, Jesus. and a man came to me and he said, yes, what is happening Jesus. in America? I Praise see all, Praise we look to you. Yes. This was in 94, mm -hmm. and he said, we look to you to be the godly nation. Yes, Jesus. And we see uh, that your, your yes, nation is going Jesus. down. Praise and now, 20 Praise some years Jesus. later, yes, it's even worse. So, Father, we need to get back to righteousness. Yes. We need to um, forgive us, Lord, of our sins and not be a stumbling yes. block to others. Yes. And, Father, seek, yes. uh, seek those who yes. need to, to come to church yes, and Jesus. know our Savior. And yes. We love you, Lord, and yes. give us a heart to win the lost. Yes. Uh, not to be self uh, Yes. Think about ourselves, but think Praise about of others, Jesus. because when it's all said and done, yes. we will all come before the judgment seat mm -hmm. of Christ. Amen. And Father, we Praise don't want to hear someone Jesus. say, "Well, you never asked me to come," yes. and we want to win all yes. we can while we can. Yes. Jesus. And we thank you for all the pastors who go yes. in the pulpit Jesus. and preach. We thank you for all the women Praise who, uh, like Linda. <laughs> work, uh, teach Sunday Praise school, uh, cook for the meals for yes. the men. They're showing their love. Yes. He said, uh, did you feed me? When did Praise we see you hungry, Jesus. Lord? Did you clothe me? When did we see you uh, naked, Lord? You said when you did it unto the least of these. So Father, the church needs to open their eyes and see the hungry and the naked and to clothe them. And you can be naked with clothes on, but but naked without the the uh, the covering of the yes. Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So Father, uh, thank you for loving us, and that the church is the pearl of great price. In Yeshua's name, I ask it. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. We do thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful nation that we live in. It is a glorious nation, and it's a nation that loves uh, people, and uh, even in Washington, trying to serve the poor. But, Father, we need you. We need your discernment of right and wrong, and we pray for our national leaders. And, again, we thank you for our freedoms. I pray today, I just, this is a little different, but, Lord God, I ask that you touch those who are listening to this program you are a healing God, and I pray that by the power of your spirit that you will go forth and you will touch and that you will heal those who need a healing in their heart, in their mind, but in their body, that, Lord, they will experience the touch of the Holy Spirit today. And, Father, we give you all praise and glory, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.